Hi, and welcome into the Russell Street Report here on Fanimal Radio. My name is Tony Lombardi. Today we have a special show. We're going to be joined by the Ravens Executive VP and General Manager Eric DaCosta. Eric, welcome into the program. How are you today? I'm doing great, Tony. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. So a lot has been going on so far this offseason. You're first as general manager, and I've been listening to some interviews with John and with Steve, particularly about the inside linebacker position and the combination of Patrick Onwaso and Kenny Young, and they seem pretty confident in that tandem. Talk about those two guys playing together, and do you share that same confidence? Well, I think both guys have shown us that they can play winning football last year, both very good athletes. We love their passion for the game. They both had outstanding off seasons and both guys move very well in space and the game of football has changed over the years. Being able to run and bend your knees and play in space and cover running backs and cover tight ends, that's a really, really important part of the job. Both guys have a knack for making plays. Both guys have played well on special teams. And we're excited about the group. I think, you know, Wink Martindale Mike McDonald, those guys are outstanding football coaches, and those guys are going to do an outstanding job of getting our linebackers ready to play games on Sundays. Now, speaking of Wink and coordinating a defense, one of the things that was important to him in the past is, have, is having that leadership on the field, leadership that came in the forms of C.J. Mosley and Eric Weddle. Both of those guys, as we know, are gone, and both of them wore the green dot at some points in 2018. Talk a little bit about Patrick Onwaso taking on that additional responsibility of wearing the green dot and being the captain on that defense? Well, I think, first of all, uh, we're not sure who's going to wear the green dot. Okay. We'll certainly have different people wearing the green dot uh, throughout practices and games, preseason games, regular season games. I think that's going to be determined at some point. But Peanut's a guy that has had some experience doing that in the past, um, I think, you know, whoever it is, they'll be prepared. You know, that's just something that kind of happens over time um, with practice, with repetition. And until you've won the green dot, you haven't won a green dot. So the idea that we'll have somebody ready to go uh, will certainly be the case. There's always going to be, anytime you lose valuable leadership on defense, there's going to be a learning curve. But we're confident that we've got the right guys on defense to pick up the spot and put us in position and be able to effectively run the defense. Eric, staying with the linebacker position, you drafted a couple of guys a couple of seasons ago, Tyus Bowser and Tim Williams, and they haven't quite performed as expected. What have you seen so far from them in this offseason and their developmental process that, makes, that, that can give fans some confidence that those guys can perform to their potential this year? Well, we're very excited about both guys. And what we've seen over the years is players, when they get the chance to play, They'll, uh, if they're the right type of guys, they'll improve and develop very quickly. And we've seen that happen on defense over the years uh, with a lot of players on our scheme. Both guys have had very, very good off seasons. And watching those guys work over the last couple of weeks, I truly believe that each of those guys will be productive football players for us this year. In Tyus, you've got a really, really good athlete who can do multiple things. He can play in space. He can rush the passer. Uh, he's got a very good skill set for our defense in terms of playing multiple positions. And Timmy Williams, you've got more of a traditional edge pass rush type of guy. He's shown us a very good first step, uh, ability to bend and close on the edge. We're excited about both guys. We think their future is now, and they're going to hopefully become the players that we thought they would when we drafted them. We're speaking with Eric DaCosta, Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Baltimore Ravens. Eric, you made a, a splash signing this offseason, which really isn't typical of the Ravens, with Earl Thomas. What about Earl attracted you? And talk a little bit about the off-the-field kinds of things that he brings to the table to the team that might fill in some of that leadership gap that may be vacated when uh, Weddle and C.J. Mosley left. Well, uh, Earl, first of all, was a guy that we scouted that night coming out of the draft when he came out of Texas, and just a sensational football player, defensive player, really fits the, the mold of the traditional, you know, Baltimore Raven type player. Um, playmaker, aggressive personality, fast, alpha, leadership on the field. Uh, we've played against him several times since he's been in the league. Always been very impressed with him what he brings to the table in terms of secondary play, but also just total defensive play. 
And so, you know, in looking for players that we thought had the chance to really impact our defense this year after we lost CJ and Suggs and Zadarius and Eric, I think that, uh, I think Earl really stood out as the one guy that could come in and really not pick up some slack, but pick up a lot of slack. He's tremendous appetite for the game of football. His passion is quite evident. He's a playmaker on the back end with ball skills. He's a good support player. He's a blitzer. And he's a guy that other guys can follow. And so we're very excited about what he brings to the table. We had a chance to watch him last week compete a little bit. And just his the one thing that we saw last week was his speed and his burst and his ability to accelerate the football. We're very, very excited about that. Most really good defense to have a player like him. And we think he fits us very well. Now talk a little bit about how he, the ten of him along with Tony Jefferson, because no disrespect to Eric Well at all, because he's a great football player for the Ravens, but it seems to me that Thomas and Jefferson are more complimentary than Eric and Jefferson. Well, I think Earl's a guy that can do a lot of different things. He can play multiple roles. I think Tony can play multiple roles as well. And I thought Eric could do that as well. Uh, there's certainly different type of players. Um, you know, Eric Weddle is probably one of my favorite players that we've had here just from a personality, leadership ability, um, everything that he brought to the table in terms of a leader on the field, off the field, in the locker room, and then his, his ability as a football player. So with Earl coming in, uh, you know, obviously no two players are exactly alike, but having seen Earl, we love what he can bring on the back end as a high safety, as a low safety, his ability to play multiple spots, his ability to play very, very fast as a guy that can – you know, do a lot of different things for you. Uh, we just think he complements our defense extremely well. And with Tony, Tony's another guy that can be used in different roles. Both guys, I think, have great leadership ability as vocal guys who can get people lined up and also lead by example on the field. So we love our back end. I personally believe we have one of the deepest secondaries in football, and hopefully that really helps us win some football games this year. Eric, another guy you brought in this offseason, Mark Ingram. He's got over 7,600 yards in his career from, from scrimmage, 55 touchdowns in eight seasons. What attracted you most to Mark? Well, we think he's a really good scheme fit for our offense. Some of, the, some of the stuff that he did in New Orleans with their offense really kind of fits what we do. Again, a guy that we knew a lot about. We scouted him also coming out. He was a player that we really liked. And what's interesting about Mark is that you know, uh, for a guy as established in the league, he's he's a good fit for us because he doesn't he hasn't really beat his body up quite a bit with a tremendous amount of carries. He's uh, been in a part of a rotation. Uh, his best football has been probably over the last four or five years. He's a guy that before Alvin Kamara went to New Orleans, he was very used, very much used in the passing game. He's got great feel as a route runner. That's a very underappreciated part of his game. He runs very hard. I think he's got vision. He's been a productive player for the most part. He's been a durable guy. And also a player that we knew a lot about with his Alabama ties. Uh, you know, this is a guy that we felt like we knew inside and out personality-wise. We also had the chance to vet him uh, using players like Willie Sneed and Ben Watson, who, who know Mark extremely well. And it was very clear to us when we brought him in. Again, a great fit personality-wise. When we've had success with, undraft, with unrestricted free agents, oftentimes a big part of that is personality. And we saw that with guys like Brandon Carr and Eric Weddle, and players that we bring in. If they've got the right kind of mentality, they're a great fit for us. And we think Mark is that type of guy. During the second wave of free agency, when comp picks didn't factor in, you guys brought in Pernell McPhee, Shane Ray, and Michael Floyd. Talk about the rationale behind all those signings. Well, those things take place over a period of weeks and months, and some of those discussions really started even going back as far as April before the draft, early April, talking to the agents, kind of gauging their interest levels. We try to find guys that, uh, you know, with some veteran uh, leadership, some guys that have a history of good play, some intriguing guys. What do they bring to the table? How do they fit? Personality, we have the chance to really vet those players and get to know their personalities. Um, and then look at the value. How much value could they conceivably bring to the team? What's their upside? What's the cost going to be? And in each case, with all three of those guys, obviously with Purnell, we knew Purnell. We know what he brings to the table. 
We love what he did last year, albeit a small sample size of about 250 plays or so. We love what he did last year for Washington. We love his personality. He knows our scheme. He knows this building. And that was an easy move for us to make. And in terms of Shane Ray, he's a guy that has had a, a checkered career with injuries. But, again, a guy that we scouted at length when he came out. And a, a, another skill set where this guy can play as a as a outside linebacker, as a sandbacker. He can drop. He can cover. He can rush the passer. He's got a good motor. Uh, we think he fits us very well. And Michael Floyd's a guy that is probably one of the better blocking uh, receivers in the in the game. Uh, he's had some success over the years. Um, he's also had some adversity that he's been able to overcome. We've got a relationship um, with him to one of our assistant coaches who coached him in high school. And so uh, we know a lot about Michael. We felt like, again, it was a very low-risk signing. All three of these guys were kind of low-risk signings with, uh, with high upside. We're excited about it. And, you know, as you alluded to, all three of these guys were good signings because they don't count against the comp pick formula. So they, uh, you know, have the chance to bring some veterans in and was very attractive to us. This summer, enjoy the outdoors. But go see your Toyota dealer first. Get an off-road ready Tacoma now with 1,000 cash back. Or pick a half-ton Tundra and get 0% APR for 60 months. Or go in style with a rugged 4Runner. Ranked top 10 in resale value by KBB.com. Get the most out of your summer with a new Toyota truck. And let's go places. We're speaking with Executive Vice President of the Baltimore Ravens and General Manager Eric DaCosta. Eric, during his conference call with PSL holders, Steve Bishotti talked a little bit about the Ravens' offensive line. And he said something I thought was pretty interesting, that you guys would not bring in just an average player, that it have to be somebody, or he insinuated that it would have to be somebody that really stood out and was an average, a guy that could make a difference along that offensive front. Talk about those thoughts. Well, I think that really stems from the idea that we've allocated some resources in the last few years to some good young players that we're excited about and we want to see what they can do. So in looking at a guy like a Bradley Bozeman or a Jermaine Illuminor or a Sanat or a Ben Powers, um, you know, players like that, Orlando Brown, even though we haven't really used a lot of high draft capital uh, on offensive line and we feel like we've got a nice young nucleus of quality backup guys that could ascend. And we've seen over the years some guys, um, you know, Ricky Wagner, Ryan Jensen, those guys didn't start as rookies. Those guys didn't even start as second-year players in some cases, but they became players. So with offensive linemen, a lot of times what we see is it takes these guys a year or two, and they become pretty damn good players. So um, unless we had the chance to bring in – an immediate impact offensive lineman, we would rather use that capital on other players and give the chance to these young guys to see who of this pack of guys really does emerge and becomes a quality player for us. I know you guys are really keen on the, uh, the Senior Bowl, and a lot of Ravens that have been drafted have come from the Senior Bowl. Talk about what you saw in Ben Powers during that game. A physical guy, tough mentality, grinder, been a very durable player. I played on a very good offensive line. Excellent technician. Good finisher. We love the program. Um, know a lot about Ben because of his relationship with Orlando. And uh, he's just a good, young, kind of a gritty, kind of a physical guy. We're excited about what he brings in the short term, but also the long term. Kind of fits our mentality as a person, as a player and uh, as a skill set guy, and so we're just excited to see what he does as he gets thrown into the mix. Another Oklahoma Sooner that you guys draft with your first overall pick, Marquise Hollywood Brown, he's been compared favorably to Deshaun Jackson at the pro level. Is that a fair comparison? Well, you know, I'm, I'm always hesitant to compare anybody to a really, really, really good NFL player. and I'm not a huge comparison guy, but... Uh, what we saw with Marquise was a game breaker, a player that could do things in space and also down the field as a vertical wideout. You know, and most guys, most receivers typically get pigeonholed as being a vertical guy or being a run after catch underneath inside player. And I think despite, you know, Marquise's smaller stature, 
He's a guy that has shown the ability to make plays down the field. He's also shown the ability to catch the ball underneath, to take a reverse, to take a screen, whatever it is. He's shown ability and flair to make big plays. He did it two years in a row. Uh, we're very excited. He was a dynamic player to watch on tape. Uh, one of the more fun guys that we've seen over the last couple of years with the ball in his hand. And just a really consistent player. For a smaller receiver, we also love, what we also love the bottom is his ability to consistently catch the football, which is a really important part of that position, obviously. So we felt like we were getting a very complete player and a guy that would make us better and would allow us to keep a balanced field and not allow the field to be shifted towards the quarterback. We're speaking with Eric DaCosta, Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Baltimore Ravens here on Fanimal Radio. This is the Russell Street Report, and I'm Tony Lombardi. Eric, before we went to break, I talked a little bit about Steve and his belief that nothing's really changed in the building with respect to you being general manager versus Ozzie being general manager. But I wanted to ask you, you know, there, there's a lot of people that wonder about Steve's involvement in personnel decisions. And from my experience with you and with him, I, I feel like he is sort of like a guiding influence, a guy that maybe stirs the drink a little bit and gets you guys to think outside the box. But if you could explain to our fans what is Steve's involvement in personnel decisions? Well, you know, the thing about Steve, he's a great communicator, and he's a, a guy that can look at a lot of different situations from a different angle or through a different lens. He's a great uh, sounding board for me, and I think a great sounding board for Ozzy and John and Dick. And We really do have a great working relationship, all of us, where we can talk about decisions and look at things in a lot of different ways and come up with the best strategy that really fits for the Ravens and fits and fits for me and for John. And so and I think in Steve's case, he's a, got great common sense and he's got a great sort of simple view of things. If, if, you know, and he's, he's not a, a, an owner that's going to meddle in any respect, um, but he's somebody that I can call and ask an opinion about something He's got a great feel for the economics of the game and the salary cap. He's got a great feel for personnel and for the draft and for trading and things like that as well. And he's also a great negotiator. So he's able to really provide me with a couple different ways to attack a problem, whether it's with a team or with an agent, uh, questions to ask, maybe a strategy to use, different things. He's, he's also great in terms of assessing people, interviewing prospects. I've gone to him in the past with a specific player in mind and said, what questions might you ask or how can we get the answer that we're looking for into this, in terms of this specific issue? So Steve is a, is a great part of our partnership that we have at the executive level, and he's very valuable to me and everybody else. He's not somebody that's going to make any demands or anything like that. Yeah, he's not involved in the minutia of personnel. He's not scouting or evaluating players. But he's somebody that's had a high degree of success in the business world using a lot of different skills that he has. And uh, we would be foolish not to, to rely on him at times. I'm asked often, Eric, about the Ravens' 2019 season and what's, what's my outlook for the season. And it always seems to parallel Lamar Jackson. What did you guys see in Lamar Jackson that you thought that he would be the right successor to Joe Flacco? Well, he's got an interesting skill set. He's uh, an exciting young player. He's a tough, tough player to defend against, and, and we're just kind of scratching the surface as to the potential for the offense. He's shown leadership. He's got an infectious personality that other people want to follow. He's got a great work ethic. And uh, we think he's going to get better. We think his sky is the limit with Lamar. We put some really interesting players around him. And we think that it's going to be a tough, a tough matchup for defenses around the league. And we think that we're kind of doing things a little bit differently, quite honestly, than most of the other teams. And that's exciting to all of us. This summer, enjoy the outdoors. But go see your Toyota dealer first. Get an off-road ready Tacoma now with 1,000 cash back. Or pick a half-ton Tundra and get 0% APR for 60 months. Or go in style with a rugged 4Runner. Ranked top 10 in resale value by KBB.com. Get the most out of your summer with a new Toyota truck. And let's go places. 
We're speaking with Eric DeCosta, general manager of the Baltimore Ravens. Eric, there's pressure to win in the NFL, and jobs are always at stake. But as a GM, not only do you have to concern yourself with winning today, but you have to have a watchful eye on the future. Talk about the challenges of winning today and the pressures that go with that, along with keeping the outlook on the future and making sure you don't make hasty decisions today that may jeopardize the long-term success of the team. Well, that's a really big part of the job as GM, and we try to do that and try to assess how can we build the best team in the short term that has the most potential to be the best team in the long term. And we do that for, with a variety of ways. Obviously, being you know smart with the salary cap is a big part of that. Acquiring as many draft picks every single year as we can with an eye towards comp picks and being smart in terms of the signings that we're going to make. Uh, managing the roster, looking at, you know, which players can help us win in the short term versus which players should we really dedicate and try and develop so that they can become good long-term prospects. How much money do we have to spend? How much money do we want to carry in next year's salary cap? How do we craft deals that allow us to obtain players but also keep them over the length of their contracts using the various structures and mechanisms to help us do that? Try to eliminate as much dead cap, dead money as possible, uh, and try and be really smart organizationally. Having the flexibility to acquire players if we can via trade or other mechanisms, if they're available, and making sure that we have the money to do that, uh, so that we can be, I think, you know, opportunistic if situations arise. And so it's a big puzzle. This has been a really, I think, important part of focus for me this year is trying to build the best team we can to play in September of 2019, but also having the best team that's possible in 2021. So I think that's being aggressive in terms of signing a young talent a year early, uh, if possible, and also uh, nailing as many draft picks as possible and hitting on players so that you can afford to let high-valued uh talent on your team that you simply can't resign, you can let that talent leave and then replace via the draft. So there's really no right way to do it. It's it's a gut thing. Some of it is objective with the salary cap and, and but also it's it's nuance, it's decision making and it's just trying to do what you can to build the best team as possible. Some players, despite posting impressive stats, are more concerned about the plays they left on the field. And as an executive in the NFL, I kind of see you as being that kind of person, always self-scouting. Talk about the self-scouting that is done at the Castle and how brutally honest you guys are with each other with the hopes to improve. Well, there's, there's nobody who puts more pressure on himself than me. And having been a part of this organization since 1996, I, I personally feel a tremendous responsibility to the fans to succeed and to build the best team, to build a team that the fans can be proud of every single year. And, uh, you know, that's a motivating factor for me every single day. That's what keeps me up at night. And so a big part of that is self-scouting, looking at the decisions we've made, good decisions, bad decisions, trying to be as, as, as brutally honest as we can. Uh, that also means that I'm going to challenge my scouts and, uh, and staff to be the best that they can be so that uh, we understand that as good as we think we may be, there's always a lot more room to be even better. Uh, we're fortunate that we've got an owner that really does preach accountability and transparency and honesty, and that permeates throughout the entire organization. Uh, and so John and I will have good discussions about the future of the team and decisions that we make that are good decisions, bad decisions. We're able to include the scouts and coaches, and it becomes one really big, important dialogue when we talk about what we think is best for the team moving forward, and we're able to really chart out strategies to help us be the best we can be. So a big part of that is being honest with yourself and questioning decisions that you make, studying decisions that you make, trying to learn from your mistakes so that you don't repeat those mistakes moving forward. Now, I know that you're an extreme competitor. I've heard you say it a number of times that you hate to lose, that winning matters. Talk a little bit about what satisfies you besides winning. What would satisfy you most as the executive vice president and general manager of the Baltimore Ravens? Man, I think the only thing that really satisfies me is winning. But <laughs> I, 
you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I want this organization to be a destination organization for employees, players alike. I want this to be the standard for sports teams. I want this brand to be recognized throughout the world. I'm very, I'm very proud of what my predecessors have done in terms of making the Baltimore Ravens a household name in football, but also in sports across the world. So that can continue. I want our employees to love working here. I want our employees to think that they've got the best jobs in the United States, in the world. And, uh, you know, personally, when I can pull the security gate out front every single day, I'm tremendously excited to come into work. Hopefully our players and other employees feel that way. I want this, uh, I want this place to be the best at everything we do, whether it's food in the cafeteria, whether it's the fields, whether it's the uniforms, uh, whether it's the building itself, whether it's the stadium experience. There's no reason why the Baltimore Ravens can't be the best. And there he is, Eric DaCosta, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Baltimore Ravens. Eric, thanks so much for joining us today. Take care. I love you guys. All right. See you, Eric. Thank you. Well, that's our program today here on the Russell Street Report, heard on Fanimal Radio. Special thanks to Eric DaCosta for joining us today. Hope you guys enjoyed the program, and we'll see you next time.